So Ryan, you've been in the Google ads industry from managing clients, uh, millions of dollars in ad spend to coaching, consulting, helping other agencies, training their teams. Uh, what do you want to share specifically with us today, just from your, your infinite knowledge of uh, Google ads? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I, I, I have this framework that I put together for strategy that has kind of been this super useful tool for me and I, I teach it in all of my, my training and, and coaching and consulting just to kind of help other marketers uh, be able to just look at any account, find out where there are areas of opportunity um, and quickly, easily assess how to scale it okay. um, or if they've done their own things to scale it and, and kind of pair it back if it need be. So um, okay. I wanted to share that. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and jump right in. Sweet. All right. So I have this. I have this beautiful presentation that I spent hours and hours <clears throat> on. And um, that's a nice <laughs> template. Look at that. That is a custom crafted template. Um, so basically, that's what I just talked about. That's me. Um, I help marketing agencies increase revenue and retention with their PPC service. Um, let's talk about Google Ads. So this, this is why I created it, right? So <laughs> this great. is an actual screenshot of, of the SERPs page. Um, I've seen this. Yeah, yeah. This is this is real, uh, real life. And and as we know, um, Google is uh, has been adding lions um, and just kind of like you know throwing the match here and there. So that's yeah. fun. Um, but basically, you know, the, this this is kind of um, a graph representing some studies that had been done about like what percentage of your market is ready to buy at any given point, okay. um, which is kind of the, the reason like I, around the time I was learning about this, um, it kind of clicked into place for me. Uh, but I was like, okay, everybody's going for this 3% sliver <clears throat> of people who are ready to buy now. That's hence the Coliseum, you know, imagery. It's like, okay, everybody's getting in this gory battle over three percent of the market and and that's common with google search uh new people even experts you know it's tempting to just go for the search term exactly what it is bottom of the funnel just hammer that and it's like everyone's going for that at the same time yeah which i mean that's the low-hanging fruit right that's what yeah. your conversions are and and it's silly not to throw your hat in the ring unless you know it's like you have a 500 hundred dollar budget and the CPCs are like 20 bucks. Like, okay, it starts to get harder there. Yeah. But essentially, you know, there's, there's this big, you know, half circle, like the red pretty well, nobody ever is going to buy from you in this section of your market, your, your TAM, if you will, total addressable market. Yeah. But, um, you know, you've got this other 5%. So you could be going after 8% instead of just three. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to expand and then you could, there's this 42% massive, uh, blue ocean, if you will, didn't plan that color uh, to, to go with that, but it works, um, of people who will potentially be ready within like 12 to 18 months. And the numbers differ from study to study. And, and you know, you'll see all sorts of things all over the place saying this is like, you know, maybe 25 to 30 percent. And this is like 30 to 60 percent. So, you know, lots of different numbers. Most agree three percent are ready to buy now. Yeah, and, and great plug for Blue Ocean Strategy. Amazing book, not written by PPCers, um, you know, so it, it, it's just about, if you don't, I'll, I'll throw a non-affiliate link uh, in, the, in the description. It's <laughs> just kind of finding something what, it, what everyone else isn't doing. So it's that Blue Ocean rather than going, in this case, kind of bottom of the funnel, thinking of, of something differently, you know, keywords or display or, or something else that doesn't already have every single other competitor in it but it's going in front of the relevant audience. So uh, yeah, Blue worked perfectly for that. Yeah. And it just lucked into that. Total, uh, yeah, yeah, I plan everything uh, yeah. meticulously. Blue ocean so, strategy, yeah. So this is uh, this is what I dubbed the market journey path. Um, so it is uh, essentially a, a map of um, the process that every person in your market goes through uh, when they experience a problem. So this is a problem-centric framework and uh, I think by looking at it through a problem-centric lens, we remove the complexity and, and like potential, you know, complete pulling it out of your butt um, pieces of, of the persona yeah. issues that people have. So they'll, they'll craft like a, a you know, a persona or an avatar. And they're like, this is my ICP. This is who I, you know, want to buy from me. But it's like, okay, is that based on real data or did you just like make that up? 
Um, yeah, we, we've all seen those YouTube videos that are just ripped off of ripped off of ripped off. I don't know where the avatar or persona originally came from. Probably something 30 years ago in some business book and then, you know, YouTubers uh, just ripped it off. But yeah, people get stuck on this is the exact person that's going to buy. And it's like, yeah. is it or would anybody else possibly buy? Like, yes, them and other people. Don't forget about all the mm -hmm. other people. Yeah, and I'm all about niching down. Like, if you speak to one person, you know, then you're more likely to get your your message to resonate. But yeah, but the reason you're speaking to that person is because they have a problem, right? That you can solve. So if you look at it in a problem centric approach, then you can talk to all of those people at once and <clears throat> still have it resonate. Yeah. So, um, so basically, I'll, I'll give you a quick walk through this, and then we can kind of like address questions or whatever. I, I've got more slides to talk about, like what the goals are and channel breakdowns and stuff like that. But um, essentially, people start contented in, in relation to a problem. Like they, they either don't have a problem or they don't know that they have a problem. Um, the, some event occurs that causes them to actively suffer. So they are aware of the problem or, or the problem has occurred, and they are then faced with the decision. They can um, move to the waiting market phase where essentially they have this, they, they understand that they have a problem, but they don't necessarily have enough information to take action on it, or they've decided the pain's not bad enough, so they're waiting, right? And from there, they have another option. They can, they can eventually decide to take action and, and pursue a solution, um, or they can decide that they're fine living with this and they just go on the rest of their life the way they are. And that's that big red half circle. Yeah. 50%. Um, so then the other option they have is they could, they could take a solution. You know, they could, they can take action, um, search for a solution um, in, in Google ads terms. Um, and then they, they're in the buying market. So they're actively seeking a solution um, from which they can, they can buy from your competitors. Uh, which includes the DIY market, mm -hmm. um, or they can buy from you. If they buy from you, you can then nurture that lead, potentially solve other problems for them. Um, I, I say nurture that lead, nurture that customer, take care of them. You're in a relationship, right? So, yeah. so continue to be in that relationship, provide value. Um, and then you may actually create this nice little small circle that uh, avoids going back to the contented and suffering market at all. And um, you have your own little like, you know, customer journey here where you can just educate them about other problems that may have arisen when solving the first problem because there's all these emergent properties right if there if you solve one problem another problem occurs yeah like if, if you're walking everywhere you buy a car then you know now you have to buy gas and insurance and you know repairs and um you know all those other issues um so every problem when solved creates new problems so if you solve those other problems then you can communicate with the people that you helped with the first problem about how you can help them with the other problems and you have built-in customers. So Makes very sense. nice. So there are goals at each stage that are different based on the stage. And this is where we kind of get into the application to PPC, to any marketing really, but I, I have used this mostly with um, PPC and PPC agencies. So the contented market, your goal is to make them aware of the problem. They don't know that they have a problem or they don't have the problem. Um, so your job is not to make them suffer, but to make them aware of the suffering that's already existing um, and get them to kind of self-identify, oh yes, I have that, that resonates with me. Um, your goal then when they're actively suffering is to educate them about the problem and all of the ways this could impact their life um, and about the solution that you provide or that your client provides. Um, in which case you want to make sure to associate the problem and the solution with your brand or your client's brand. Uh, so education and association. Um, and you know you want to understand the problem and the buyer's journey well enough to understand what education needs to take place to move them to the buying market. If they decide not to buy and to wait, um, then they have objections. There are reasons they've decided that that maybe the objection is the pain's not bad enough, um, in which case you would want to educate them about how bad the pain actually is, what happens if they don't solve the problem. 
Um, and then maybe it's, you know, pricing or maybe it's just, you know, timing's not right or, or whatever objections, um, you know, part of the marketing and sales uh, process should be understanding the objections and finding ways to overcome them. So um, at the waiting market phase, your goal is to overcome those objections. Yeah. And then move them to the buying market phase. So at the buying market stage, um, your goal is really just to show up and, and, you know, prove that you're credible. So social proof reviews, testimonials, case studies, um, you know, just high ad rank, um, like be there and prove that you know what you're doing, that you're a contender. Um, and if you have been in front of them for all of these other stages, you tend to have um, better, better luck, better chances of success um, in getting the selection here. Um, I can talk about that later and why that is. Um, but then, of course, your, your goal at the nurture stage is to support and educate. So support them uh, as your customer and then educate them about the other problems they may have that you can solve or, you know, how they can continue to buy from you as a loyal customer. Makes so. sense. Um, I just wanted to jump in here. Uh, do you have a, a specific example with PPC or is that coming later as far as like an actual ad campaign for, for going from content to suffering to buying to waiting overcoming objections or do you do you just want to give the example right on top of this slide well i'm glad you said that so there's a different uh, order i thought so <laughs> yeah um of course it's already a slide why did i ask oh yeah because i plan everything <laughs> meticulously exactly um so um you actually don't want to take this in order um because if you start a google ads campaign targeted toward the contingent market you're gonna spin your wheels, you're gonna spend a bunch of money and you're not gonna get any conversions and you're you're gonna end up losing your client or just you know your bank account. So what you wanna do is take it in reverse order and start from the bottom right and move up and to the left. Okay. So um, the buying market, they're ready and looking. So you start there, which is why everyone starts at that 3% sliver uh, because they they are ready to make a decision. You know, if, if you're doing Google ads, well, you've got the search network right there and you can target specific keywords. Yes, some of them may be really expensive, but those are the people looking to buy and you have the highest chance of getting ROI. Yeah. So you want to start there. Um, if you already have customers, then you want to start at the nurture stage and then move to the buying stage and, and kind of expand, tap out each one of these stages. Um, so, you know, if you already have customers, then you would start with the nurture stage and, and then move to buying. But in this case, if we're starting like from scratch, you get customers and then you focus on expanding uh, AOV or lifetime value, you know, anything that you can do to get more from the work you've already done to acquire customers, you want to focus here. Um, so it's built in trust. They're easily accessible. Makes sense. Next, yeah. you focus on the waiting market. So they're already aware of the, the problem. You don't really have to educate them much, uh, but they have objections. So you just focus on getting in front of them, overcoming objections, then suffering, then contented. Um, irrelevant, I just added this because I had six boxes. Um, so this is the red square or, or the red, you know, section that you just want to avoid. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you can't always avoid them because you can't just tell Google, hey, don't show my ads to anyone irrelevant um, outside of like, you know, search you know, negative keywords and, and things like that. But, you know, if you're, if you're talking like discovery ads or YouTube ads or, well, demand gen ads yeah. uh, or YouTube ads, then, um, you know, you can't really say, Hey, don't, don't show my ads to people that aren't going to buy. Um, well, yeah, so, supposedly performance max just knows and always works with that. Um, <laughs> it does. Yeah. I, I forgot about performance max. That is flawless. Yeah. Um, it, it already knows who's irrelevant and who's isn't, who isn't and doesn't waste any money on irrelevant people or, or it just takes like a year and a hundred grand to figure it out. So AI. Magic. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's a little <laughs> testing? You've got to pay for that data, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it's not total trash. We, we just like to make fun of it. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, that 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 does run into irrelevant a lot more. You, know, you mentioned YouTube, Performance Max, uh, Display, um, Discovery, and, and whatever else comes out in the next six months. I think that's where you can run into you're trying to hit the other boxes, the nurture, the, the waiting, something like that. And you, 
you do, you know, handpick placements on industry sites or, you know, a lot of people like to handpick a YouTube channel or something. That's yeah. a, that's a con- our clients ask like, hey, can we be on this channel? And it's just a manual placement with usually a manual bid and you just bombard it. And it's like, yes, that can work, but it, it can it can also be irrelevant without you realizing it, like, or, 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 uh, interest or topics. It's like, Oh, this makes sense. It's like, kind of, it's going to show all over the place. Uh, when, when yeah. you get to non search. Exactly. It's not quite as specific as they like to make you think it is. And generally, um, you know, it's better to collect the data and then add several relevant, you know, hyper relevant placements. If you are building a placement centric campaign. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I actually have different focuses by stage as well. Um, and so if we need to walk through like a very specific, um, campaign setup, I could, I could do that as well, but generally, you know, it just goes kind of like search and shopping, you know, retargeting more retargeting and maybe like research centric, um, uh, search, but probably not a whole lot of search, uh, for the, the waiting market suffering would again, be like research centric, uh, keywords in search. Um, and then some more kind of non-search targeting custom intent audiences, uh, contented. You probably want to stay away from unless you're like Coke or Pepsi, um, you know, huge brands, but, but basically just blanket the world with impressions to let them know that you're there. Yeah. Um, so the, the goals though, like we, we got to start with conversion to profit. And this is actually one of the trickier things, um, the goals as you expand, um, because if you're scaling an account, most people are still looking for conversions and profit at like when they're starting to scale into the suffering market phase, like when they're yeah. targeting the suffering market, they're still looking for conversions of profit uh, as directly attributable metrics, but that's not really how it works because those people aren't ready to buy. You have to move them along their journey from the suffering market to the buying market. And so if you're not doing that, <clears throat> like you're not going to get them to buy you're just going to push them away. So it's, you know, the, the classic example of like asking somebody to go home with you instead of asking them on a date or like asking to get married. Yeah. First meet somebody. So, um, and that, that's so kind of, or sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. I was going to keep going. I was going to say that's, that's kind of what GA4 is trying to do. And, and people are, uh, for, for non-experts, it, it's the fraction thing. And in, in Google Ads, you, you had 1.78 conversions and all that stuff that, that's just showing up. It's attempting to do the multiple touch points. So you, yeah. you've got kind of the, the contented, the suffering, and the nurture, waiting, buying. Uh, could definitely be the same person spread out, spread out over three or four months that clicked on the banner ad, the YouTube video, did different searches, came back organically, back on a remarketing ad, and you get all these different touch points. So that that's where you get, you know, a, you got 1.78 conversions or something weird like that. So it, it's it's trying to do the data-driven thing. I, I think it's pretty sloppy. You just got a bunch of fractions. You now have to explain to a client, like, what is... What's one and one point seven eight? What does that mean? It's like yeah, multiple. I don't touch remember points. getting point seven eight phone calls this. Yeah, week. what does that mean? Um, but uh, yeah, that's GA four is trying to do it, and it's trying to factor it into the auto bidding. Uh, so hopefully that gets better. But you you can you can kind of see how all the different campaigns are working together with the fractions. Um, yeah, I guess. And so and that is also something they're trying to focus on with demand gen ads um, and it's you know with with their reporting on lift um which is really you want to start focusing on that more at the the waiting market and the the suffering market um stages but i don't know how well google's going to be able to report on lift because this isn't a google centric like a an isolated thing you know people are going to yeah. use whatever platforms they're going to use um so if somebody sees a billboard and then goes and searches on google it's like well okay google gets 100 percent attribution for that even though that was a multi-touch which would be a branded search term technically uh most of the generally time. yeah yeah they're, they're gonna google the brand and then it's like well we get branded anyway it's like well maybe not it's that common argument like or you could do the reverse of that there's a common you know the billboard abc company they're all over the radio they're all over billboards people just google it for for home services software b2b and they just google it. I'm like well i need that thing uh you know it's like kleenex it's associated with with a, a, a tissue they just search the brand as the thing 
Um, and that's a good opportunity to bid on that giant competitor that bought every billboard in town. You know, where it were less, where we're, you know, free something or other, or just they're going to get multiple quotes anyway. It's like, yeah, here's here. People Google Salesforce. It's like they're just looking for a CRM that just has the bigger name. So it's like maybe they'll talk to three or four different ones, get a bunch of demos, a bunch of different calls. It's like just try to be one of their top three picks that they talk to and get a demo and get your proposal on the desk, a bigger company is gonna get more than one quote if you're in B2B uh, or even home services or something smaller. Generally, you're, you'll you'll talk to more than one person before you hire. And, and, and again, that's a much shorter sales cycle, but um, true in a lot of industries, there's gonna be multiple touch points and they're gonna click on multiple ads. So just kind of get yeah. it get in the, the top spot so you're one of the ones uh, uh, going for their business. Exactly. Yeah. And that varies a lot based on the, the offer, the type of industry, if it's like break fix, like, you know, I've got a plumbing emergency. Well, yeah, they're going to go with the first one that, you know, they can get a hold of on the phone that is not going to be, you know, ridiculously expensive. Um, you know, the, the first one that can help them for an affordable price. And then, you know, if it's something where they're doing research, yes, they'll call multiple people. Um, they'll probably look at lots of different reviews. There's a lot of ways to increase the odds of, of getting that, um, but uh, that tends to be, you know, buying market stage. Yeah, um, that's usually the the bottom, and and we manage a lot of home services, and it, it's interesting. A lot of times, the top spot, you know, they'll they'll either get they'll get the phone call, and they say we could be there in three days because they're that popular of a company. It's like I I need right. someone today, <laughs> which a smaller company, maybe you're in position five or six or something that seems like trash. It's like well, everyone else can't come out here for four days. It's like. I have techs ready right now. We have nothing booked. So I, ironically, a small company has the time to get the job or they call the other one. You know, it's a, it's a $200 trip charge and this, no free estimates, yep. blah, blah, blah. It's like, that's terrible. Whereas you could put that in the ad, no trip charge or 30 day free trial or, or something that stands out next to the big guys. You, you don't necessarily have to outbid them, which is what Google wants you to do. Be at the top, outbid them. It's like, Bid lower, bid in, be in position three and four. That's fine, and and you're the after they decide not to go with the big guys, too expensive, to weren't available, blah blah blah. You you do get the business later, which is kind of yeah. counterintuitive to what Google tells you to do. Exactly, you want to be unique. Uh, you want to stand out. And you want to be persistent and, and find creative ways to get in front of them. So, you know, if they are at the buying market stage and they've been searching, but not necessarily finding anyone, yeah. um, then maybe you've got them on a retargeting list um, or a non-search list um, based on that, uh, based on like YouTube search terms. Yeah. Maybe you're in front of them with video ads talking about how you're different from other agencies, you know, how you don't have wait times or you, you know, you don't charge uh, trip fees and things like that. Yeah. And you're, you're targeting people who are searching things like, how do I fix yes, you know, uh, shower leak or whatever is going on. Um, just good creative ways of getting past the, the search like high CPC barrier. Yeah. So I, I use cases. It's pretty obvious. Um, I wanted to talk about the principles. If you got a couple seconds here yeah. uh, behind this. So um, I didn't include an actual like breakdown of examples. But um, again, you know, it's most of us know search and shopping is where the conversions come in. Mm -hmm. um, and then knowing what to focus on past that as you scale uh, is kind of an essential part of, of knowing like which channels or, or which campaign types to use. So yeah. you know, anything non search tends to work really well at the suffering or, or waiting markets. Um, and then you want to make sure that your messagings and your targeting match the goals of that. So you're trying to educate at the suffering market and overcome objections at the waiting market. Uh, and, you know, as long as you have all of these elements present, um, then you'll be able to get in front of the right people or at the right times with the right messages. Um, it's not necessarily a matter of like, okay, now we're going to target these specific people because they are in that stage. Um, it's kind of like you just have to put the elements in place so that that catches their eye. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the no like and trust principle is, you know, essentially this is all about building relationships, right? So you're, you're getting in front of them, you're educating them, providing value, introducing yourself before they're ready to buy. So you can show that you care about more than just their wallet. And um, so they, they know you, 
Um, hopefully they like you. If they don't, that's fine. But they like you more than their competitors, more yeah. than your competitors. At so, least that much. Um, and then they trust you uh, enough to, to give you money. So, I mean, that's that's pretty pretty 101 marketing kind of stuff. But uh, these two, um, these kind of set a case for, for branding or non-search um, in association with um, kind of guiding people through this this process, right? So the mere exposure effect um, in the 60s, there's a, a Polish researcher named uh, Robert Zajong, and he uh, did this these studies that found that the more people were exposed to something, the more likely they were to trust or prefer it, mm-hmm. and uh, because it felt comfortable, it felt familiar, right? So um, he developed this thing called the mere exposure effect, um, which is exactly what I just said. And um, what we find is that um, it kind of explains, well, when paired with reticular activation, um, which is there, there is something called reticular activators in the brain. And, and basically our, our brains, our subconscious mind is incredibly powerful. It's always bringing in everything um, that, that is around us, but it then filters out anything that's irrelevant or unimportant mm-hmm. so that we don't go crazy from input overload. And then it, it uses reticular activators to activate the reticules in in you know our eyes and brain. I don't know all the science, but I know the words. Yeah. Um, it uh, it then you know basically brings it to the forefront of our mind to consciously be aware of it. So you know people use the example of like if you buy a, a red Corvette and you hadn't seen them before, then you're going to see them all over the road now because they're suddenly like relevant to your life. Yeah, or when you're shopping for something, like you don't pay attention to car ads until you're looking to buy a car, and then suddenly you see all of them. You watch the commercial, you don't hit the skip button, uh, you're actually looking for it. So we actually bring that up with clients or or with coaching, saying a, a lot of times make it look like a car ad or make it look like a realtor ad or a software ad so they see it and in that split second, the the reticular activation they they know what it is you know whether it's mm-hmm. facebook or banner ads or youtube uh not necessarily search because i mean they typed it but they'll say oh that, that looks too much like a like a whatever ad it's like it's supposed to someone that's <laughs> looking for that should see a car immediately or, or the cheesy mm-hmm. stock photo realtor ones it's like that uh, people immediately like oh this is a realtor it's people in front of a house shaking hands with a clipboard it's like yes sometimes you purposely use stock photos to look like what it is yeah yeah exactly um and certainty is another important thing so if if people feel certain about what something is if it feels comfortable and familiar because it's what they expect to see um then you know they're more likely to trust it and um there's quicker association so yeah having something that looks like everything else is not a bad thing yeah that's Uh, why i actually personally i'm not a fan uh this is on facebook more often but uh i mean ppcers are usually on multiple platforms and and should be but it's it's the trick i don't know whose course another course replicate it who's selling this but it's a facebook post that looks like a facebook post it's usually um, you know, like I, I have kids and everything. So I see, I see a family picture and I stop and I look at it cause I'm trying to see like, Oh, who is this? They went to Disneyland. Cool. And I really, I look at the image a long time. Like, I don't know them. Who is this? I thought this was my friend, you know, said, wait. And then I stop. I'm like, this is an ad. And then I, I read it. It's like, Hey, do you need Google ads software? You know, and this and that. And it's like, I, th- I thought this was my friend. They went to Disneyland with the kids and it's like, cause that's exactly what the picture is. Or, you know, they, they must, they probably double or triple layer it to whatever's relevant. Um, and it, it looks, it's just an organic post. And I personally don't like that cause it made me stop. Cause I thought it was a friend of mine went on vacation with the family, but then mm-hmm. I'm like, wait, this is some software. Like, what am I looking at? And then I'm, I'm actually more upset rather than just like a screenshot of a dashboard or, or something that, that looks like what it is. Yeah, yeah. People think they're being clever and uh, they maybe they are being clever, but it backfires. Yeah. Um, so don't, don't be clever. Give people what they want, um, which is my first go-to marketing principle. Yeah, I, I agree. Just make it look like exactly what it is. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't really like the tricks personally because people do stop, but then they they leave after that you caught right. their attention with something uh and that in that case would be an emotional one it'd be you know i thought mm-hmm. it was a personal uh thing like post from a friend 
So then you, you kind of tricked them to get them, uh, which is, is not a good start for for no. for uh, trust, which is one of your points right there. And then I don't like them, and then I realize I don't know them. So I already hit yep. three things. Uh, yep, and you don't want to know them. Yeah, so. I'm like, wow, that was a stupid trick. Yeah, so it's like the it's like churn and burn agency. It's like okay, maybe you can maybe you can acquire customers. Um, maybe you can get attention. Maybe you can get the click or stop the scroll or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not worth it if you can't retain them or or turn them into a paying customer. Yeah. Um, so which is why like my primary consulting is around retention. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely. So the the mere exposure effect and reticular activation are generally um, associated with like non search, but they really come into play. Um, with search. So if you're using non-search, then you are, you, you're basically becoming more and more familiar to your audience, to your market. And so that when they do search, they're more likely to recognize your name. So maybe exactly. you don't get branded increase, but you do get those reticular activators fire when they see your results. So maybe you are third in the search results, but if they recognize your brand versus the, the one in the first and second position, then you could get that click just because they you're more comfortable, you're more familiar, you're more trusted. Yeah. So that's kind of the case that I generally like to to use to set um, a a better um, kind of precedent for for non search. A lot of people are just like, well, if it doesn't get conversions, I don't want it. But as you're scaling, you kind of have to focus on things that don't get conversions. Yeah. So do a small percentage of the budget to to lift search because otherwise you're, yeah. you're just another search result. Whereas if they've seen the banner ad that you think it's wasting the budget, it's just clicks. It's like, no, that that helped search. And, and usually you can connect the dots. You'll see after a couple months, search just has a huge lift. It's like, yes, we're working on shift, but the, those YouTube and banner ads and discovery that actually that is boosting uh, search. Yeah. Exactly. And so, you know, generally, um, I'll just close out of the, the thing now, but that's, um, that's more or less the, the framework. It's just kind of like understand the problem, the phases that they go through as they experience the problem and, um, then use Google ads or, or Facebook or whatever channel mix you have. Um, ideally you would use a, a kind of omni-channel approach for this, but if you're just starting out Google, alone can target all of these stages yeah um and so you know hefty remarketing a lot of the custom intent audiences uh, performance max was supposed to be able to target all of this with one campaign type i would i didn't have a lot of hope but i kind of had like this this you know as gandalf would say a fool's hope <laughs> yeah. um so um didn't pan out but Not that was really the idea behind it is sound. I think it could work with a couple thousand dollars a day is my guess, which is what Google tends to focus on. It's like, yeah, eventually that much money for enough time will probably figure it out. But it, if if it's your job, you know, your own company, you're in, mm -hmm. you're in house or you're an agency, you don't have that time to tell the client, hey, three months. I know it's not doing well, but let the AI give it a few more months. I know it's wasted 20 grand, but just few more months and the AI will figure it out. It's like you're fired from in-house or from the agency. Or if it's DIY, that's going to be the worst. That was your money. Um, yeah. And Google's just wait for the AI. It's like, I need business. I'm not waiting on your stupid AI. Uh, so, yeah, not, not a huge fan of it. I've seen a little bit of success, but every single, we've said this too, uh, every single option is available separately with more features. So why would you right. ram it all together with less features, less data, less transparency? I, I think giant brands, Geico is probably running one and the in-house guy checks it 10 minutes a day and loves it because uh, it just goes. Yeah. But I think everyone else, it's like manually move all the levers. They're all there. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Not and Google, Google themselves will say like, hey, this is a supplementary campaign type. So yeah. you should use it to kind of fill in the cracks when you already have the building put together if right? it doesn't so, cannibalize it which sometimes it does your your standard shopping just tanks it's like what happened uh or search yeah. or branded but um yeah that's it it's a tricky one it's most of the the education is saying you know you have to have the budget to test if you're going to do it if you can't test money and throw it away don't do it which is a lot of clients it's just like don't bother it's too experimental um yeah. which one could one, one to circle back do we have a second to go through uh a, a an actual example, like kind of plugging, plugging a real yeah. campaign into your, cause I'd like to see that. 
Yeah, you bet. Let me uh, let me share my screen again. Um, bum, bum, bum. Okay, so uh, essentially, so if if I were looking at like a whole account, because this wouldn't be one campaign. Um, if, if you were to do all of this in one campaign, it would have to be performance max and you don't really get the control. Yeah, this is a whole so Google Ads account. <laughs> right. So we start again at the buying market stage. Um, so this is where everybody's ready to, to buy. So we, you know, we do our keyword research. We find out, okay, what are they specifically looking for that has buying intent? Like what, you know, is it like plumber near me? Generally, if somebody's looking like near me for home services, then, you know, they want to hire somebody. Yeah. They, like, they're not just like, oh, I wonder why plumbers are close. Like, this, yeah, nobody okay, does yeah. that. Or that's, you know, personal injury attorney or accounting software that does yeah. something. It's, it's really, really specific. It's at the bottom. Exactly, exactly. So um, that's, you know, they're, they're looking to do business with somebody. So that's where you start, right? You, you want to find, um, you know, however many keywords you can that, that have very high or clear buying intent. Um, add all your negatives to, to refine that traffic um, before and after the campaign's launch. And then, um, you know, hopefully from there, you know, you start kind of refining, optimizing. Um, when you've kind of tapped out the buying market or, or rather when you're seeing consistent results from it, you can start with the nurture market, um, which is where you want to start adding and retargeting. Okay. And depending on your traffic size, like, so if you have just a ridiculous amount of traffic and cre can create a lot of behavior based audiences, like, Hey, they visited this page, um, and didn't convert or they, they, you know, visited this page and scrolled 90%, you know, and, and, or they visited this page and this page, whatever, you know, intent, um, on whatever behavior signifies intent to do business, but not necessarily, um, uh, like the readiness to buy. So that, would that um, be micro conversions or like downloaded a free ebook or that kind of thing, like, uh, or join yeah. the newsletter or something kind of a soft yeah. conversion. So they've, if they've opted into something, um, you know, if you have like a really good lead magnet, yeah. then of course that would be, they would technically have been in the buying market, um, and, and converted, but not necessarily become a paying customer. Yeah. Um, then you can retarget based on, you know, that particular action. So, you know, it could be a, uh, a customer match list, um, or it could just be a, a list of converters um, that you then kind of push toward like, hey, book a call, schedule an appointment, whatever. Um, if they have already purchased from you and there are other ways you can serve them, um, it's ideal to have very specific conversion actions if possible. So if you have multiple forms or different services, uh, for four different services, then, you know, whoever filled out like the, you know, shower repair um, conversion form, you know, or, or, or called for that, you could add them to a list for, um, for shower repair and then target those people with like hot water heater replacement or something like that, you know, something else that you could do to serve them, educate them about like, hey, um, you know, maybe your shower broke, maybe you've got old piping, maybe you need to replace your hot water heater. Here's some of the benefits to this versus what you currently have. Or remodeling, it's like so much damage. It's a lot more than just one thing. Uh, or, exactly. I mean, you do a lot of agency coaching. I, I see for specifically PPC agencies, they'll do kind of something to get on your side. I, I've seen one real popular thing, you know, five tips for how to hire an agency, what to look for. It's this kind of, you know, we're an agency, but we're going to give you tips to to hire people or hire, how, what to look for in an ad agency. So that's, I mean, how would you use that in that lead magnet? Because I know that's, that's a lot of your coaching too. Yeah. So for one, I tend to take off my gloves when I'm coaching. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't use that as a lead magnet. Um, I oh, mean, wow. That's used it. everywhere. That's so, yeah, okay. I, don't, don't do so that. That's a good tip. This is, this is just opinion. It, well, I mean, you can do it if it's working great, then I'm wrong. But I think that people are going to see that and be like, oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so how to, what to look for in an agency? You like, that's, that's what this is. Like. If an agency is telling you what to look for in an agency, they're like, Hey, this is like all these other guys do it this way. Look for us. It's a little biased. Yeah. Coming so, from their site. <laughs> Yeah, so so it's hard to get 
trust from that. Like maybe if, if somebody, um, I, what I would rather do with a lead magnet is solve a problem they have. Here's how to set up a Google ads campaign. Here's how to set up a Facebook campaign. Here's how to, you know, optimize, um, you know, here's the difference between smart campaigns and search campaigns. Um, like just basically educate them, solve a problem that they have and get them started. And then like, if they're too, like if they're successful starting out, then they're going to have more money yeah. and less time. And if they have more money and less time, then you can, then, you know, you've helped them, you've provided value to them. Um, and you're more likely if you're staying in front of them after that opt-in, uh, generally email or, or SMS marketing is going to be much better than, than retargeting for this. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, if you're staying in front of them, then you can be like, hey, how's this coming along? Do you have any other problems? Um, and they could be like, look, this is this is great. You really helped us. Um, can you do this for us? Because we don't have time. Like we're, we're busy running our business. Um, so there are if you can solve the first part of the problem, other problems will occur. Yeah. Um, the emergent properties will will arise and you'll have more things that you can do for them so basically give them the solution and charge them for implementation great tip that, so, that's much better than a, a free ebook on on what to look for which they're just going to load it up on themselves which that, that's the thing going against the most common thing you see and then it gets recycled on youtube and it's like well this is what i do i have five tips on hiring an agency that's my lead magnet it's like yeah. it's it's very common but usually not yeah. effective and it gets overused yeah, it, honestly the best clients are not going to be the ones that don't know how to hire an agency yeah they're going to be the ones that are already working with an agency and they're not happy yeah because they already have the accounts they're already used to spending money they're already getting some results they're just most of the time people leave their agencies because they don't uh they don't like the communication or or the lack thereof you know maybe they're they're, they're not getting results that's yeah. a big part of it People are missing deadlines or budgets or whatever, but they don't, um, a big part of it is the relationship aspect. So there are clients getting great results that are like, hey, you've done great for us. We're just ready for like a bigger agency, yeah. which really means an agency that has like processes and, and can like communicate consistently and, and lets us know what they're doing and, and values us. Yeah. So um, yeah, essentially that's, if I were gonna do a lead magnet, for an agency, that's kind of more what I would do is I would I would find out, okay, um, what is it w that we can help people with? How can we teach them to do it um, in a free or super cheap way? Yeah. Um, and then just like pump that out with ads and all of the opt-ins, you just stay in front of them, continue to educate and then, you know, make sure they know that when they're ready, like when they don't have time to do it themselves or if they need help, like you're there and you can help them. Makes sense. So that's kind of your, you're buying a nurture, you know, you've, you've got them to buy and sometimes buying is that lead magnet opt-in, yeah. you know, or, or a, um, a low value purchase. Um, and then, you know, you, you retarget, stay in front of them with, um, email and, and SMS and whatever. Um, and then you can start to expand into, so the waiting market, when you would expand into that, um, you would start to kind of look for, okay, what objections do they have? Um, is it price? Okay, so we can retarget those who have visited our sales page or those that visited our contact us page or, or schedule an appointment or whatever, um, but didn't convert. We want to target them with non-search. Uh, generally, I would go discovery. That's going away. So maybe like um, demand gen, maybe uh, some display, uh, probably exclude mobile apps, but but yeah i don't know i've seen it go either way um so uh target them with objection like countering copy or or you know imagery so headlines like hey we're running a promotion like, yeah hey, so price is an issue like hey we've got this deal from here to here you know you can get um, we're not we're not charging any uh trip fees or um you know we'll do a, a 39 dollar um you know, tune up of your AC, whatever, $69, whatever the, the price point would be. Yeah. Um, and, and just kind of whatever, over, whatever objections they had overcome those with the copy. So it's like, okay, well, um, the objection was, I didn't want to wait. So, okay, well, we had, 
um, well, the objections I didn't want to wait, they would be in the waiting market. So um, yeah. it's generally going to be like price based or, or um, you know, like that was, well, price is what comes to mind right now. So we'll stick with that. Yeah. Um, fo focus on that, get in front of them, um, promotions or like uh, talk about payment plans or, or whatever, you know, no money down, um, yeah. anything like that. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. It'd be really big. Suffering market, um, you're going to be also using non-search, but you're going to start looking at search keywords as well um, so that you can have a uh, like a search campaign <clears throat> to answer questions. Generally, you're pointing them to articles that are educating them. Um, although, if you have like YouTube videos that educate people about the problem that they have, um, so again, wait, waiting, like if we're looking at the, the PPC agency example, instead of the, the home services, the waiting could be focused on price. So you could talk about like payment plans and things like that. Um, if it's based on like, well, I don't want to get locked into a 12 month contract. Okay, no contracts. Yeah. Like we, we have an agreement, it's month to month. Um, if, if we don't earn our keep, then you can leave next month. So um, whatever the objection would be like well i don't i don't want to buy this whole package i don't want like seo and email marketing and ppc okay we'll just just a la carte what do you want um so you can kind of speak to that uh granted you know you would want to educate them on the page like hey if you don't get this whole package you probably won't get the results that our other clients are getting because this is put together as a like comprehensive marketing solution and it's based on principles of how people buy and so you want to be in front of them everywhere but yada yada um, suffering market phase, it would be like when people are starting to search, um, you know, what, what makes a good agency or, or, yeah. you know, why, why, um, well, whatever problems they would have, um, that would cause them to look for an agency. Um, you know, should I go for an agency or in-house, um, you know, how much, and you could, you could even target people who are, um, looking for, uh, look at like job listing sites, um, potentially uh, putting listings up for marketers. Um, there's there's a lot of things that you could do. You'd have to put in the time to, to custom tailor it to your own work. But then, of course, all the non-search stuff, um, you would layer it in, drive them to articles. And this is where you could drive them to, you know, some of the like, you could, you could test some low dollar campaigns. Um, some non-search campaigns pointing them to like a five ways to pick the best agency or like things to look for um because it's it's low dollar and it's not like it's an education piece you're not trying to like you're not giving it to them as value uh, other than like as bottom of funnel value it's not like this is going to make them decide to go with us yeah it's more like this is some this is just some, some stuff to think about yeah, and it, it's interesting you mentioned uh, YouTube. I, I guess kind of full disclosure, that's, that's part of what we're doing right now. Uh, the marketers watching us, they, they, they know exactly what's happening. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's a couple of different things. There, there's the organic YouTube and, and old-fashioned organic blogs. You, <clears throat> you solve all the problems. One, you're just providing value, helping the community, uh, just, just the right thing to do. But uh, there's two people that can be the first touch point and, and, you know, they, they find you and then later hire you for the Google ads coaching or the agency, uh, coaching. That's the first touch point. Uh, or, uh, is, is actually Alex Ramosi that said this. I don't know if he borrowed it or it's some, uh, it was his. Um, but he said a lot of times it can close something when people are, are looking, it's like, you know, who is Ryan Baker? It's like, you know, saw and looked at some things like, I don't know. And then you look, it's like, okay, here's some really good content. And it's like, oh, look, here's a YouTube thing. And they watch, maybe they watch half of it. It's like, oh, he knows what he's doing, smart guy, you know, and look at, look at this page and then look at the blog and look at the Twitter, all this stuff that it, it's not always the first touch point, actually. Uh, it can be the bottom of the funnel that's the closer. It's like this agency has, or, or this coach or this, this training course has absolutely nothing they don't exist out front of, outside of their ClickFunnels landing page, mm -hmm. uh, which I hit pretty hard. Uh, or you Google their name. They do not exist. Mm -hmm. Just it, it, If you're buying from anybody uh, in, in a lot of industries, not just PPC, uh, if you Google them and it's bad or there's absolutely nothing there, that's that trust thing. It's like, who is this person? Uh, especially when you get into training and courses and education, you want to look up with all the fake gurus, do you know what you're talking about? Or an agency, it's kind of like, how are you any different than any other agency? And a lot of people are saying, well, 
Go look at our YouTube. We do live audits. Go look at our LinkedIn. It's like, wow, these are really good posts. You're clearly an expert. And it it's a closer. So it could yeah. really be any point in the funnel. Yeah, and that's that's the whole no like and trust thing. So yeah. if you're if you're building a relationship with someone, the more expensive your solution is, the more time you have to spend with them for them to trust you enough to believe that your offer will work, that yeah. your solution will give them what they want. And so if you want to build trust, like create more content, educate more, provide more value, be in more places. Yeah. And so like you said, you know, you could be in in just like one place. The buying market could just be, you know, visiting your website from um, the like the the path from contented to suffering to buying could be one LinkedIn post. It could be one mm -hmm. YouTube video. Uh, it could just be like, you know, which is the whole point of webinars back in the day. Like, yeah. it's, I mean, it still is the point of webinars, but they just they're less good at it. They faded um, quite a bit. Oh, or that was yeah, like it's, conferences way back. Um, you, you'd go to conference and a lot of the speakers would get hired. Um, with, you know, SMX conference or all these other ones. Uh, you know, it, that was a, I mean, they still happen and a lot of them went virtual, but that was another thing, uh, or people do the book method. They, they write a book yeah. and, and the book's okay, but it's more so I'm a best selling author. Here's my agency. Here's my coaching program. Maybe they buy the book. Maybe they don't. And, and the books filled, yeah. they're usually filled with upsells. Um, but it's establishing the credibility. I, I read your book. It's amazing. I'll hire you now, which is different yeah. than hire something google ads agency or whatever the book sells right. or it closes because this agency had a book and this one didn't there's so many touch points and they all they crisscross quite a bit exactly but the whole point is to, to walk them through this journey and to educate them give them the information they need to make an informed decision solve their problem and then charge them to solve, to to implement the solution you know like give them the pieces they need um, so if they if they want to do it themselves, they're never going to pay you to do it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and honestly, like a, any business that wants to do the work themselves, um, that doesn't have an in-house team. So like a small, you know, service based business, like, you don't want to work with somebody that wants to do it themselves because they're not going to have the money to pay you. And, yeah. and they're going to have their their you know hands on the levers all the time. So um, just, you know, shy away from them increase your standards, increase your rates, and, um, you know, focus on the people that you can help the best, um, which are the people that, that know the solutions, that trust you to offer it in a, or to, to provide it to them in a competent way, and then just, you know, are willing to pay you for it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, this is really great content. Thanks so much for sharing this. I mean, this is, you know, you're, you're specific. We're talked a lot about Google ads and agencies and coaching and all that, but th this is really relevant to nearly every industry. And this, this is huge for going into marketing and thinking about that. Cause yeah, a lot of people, uh, even pros that have been doing it forever or their clients push them into bottom of the funnel only and something that's brutally competitive. It's like, you, you have to do all of these. We can't just uh, going back to attorneys, you know, personal injury attorney, just that word and just hammer it $200 bid. It's like, and <laughs> something else, you, you gotta <laughs> stand out or, or software, a lot of touch points, different, so mm -hmm. many different things. Yeah. It's uh, thanks so much for sharing yeah. this. This is great. And, uh, mentioned a lot about your programs. Where, where can people find you and, and reach out if they want to, want to hire you? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I'm at Kingly consulting.com. K I N G L Y consulting.com. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. Come and find me. I'm always posting uh, free content to teach you how to solve the problems in your agency. I've um, seen it. It's, then, it's amazing. <laughs> well, thanks. And I've got a newsletter, uh, which you're subscribed to. I uh, am. So thank yeah. you. <laughs> um, and it is, uh, it is basically going much deeper than I'm allowed to go on LinkedIn because mm -hmm. there are character limits. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm a little long-winded. So um, yeah, you can you can find links to that on LinkedIn as well, or it's on my website in the top nav. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and, and we'll drop links to that uh, in the description or uh, wherever else is relevant, depending on where this is posted. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks so much, Ryan. I really appreciate it. It's great content. Yeah, Chris, thanks, man. It was great to be on and great chatting with All you. All right, thanks a lot. Have a good one. You too. 
All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching our PPC ads training video. Uh, if you want more videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, like this video if you found it useful. And any questions, post them in the comments down below. Uh, we also have additional training in the description. So thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.